All right, guys, Coach Jamie here, and in this video, we're going to talk about defensive breakout calls. We talk a lot about how communication is the key to making a group of individual players function as a team, and how communication makes us greater than the sum of our parts. What I mean is six players, that's five skaters and a goalie, playing without communication play like six players. But six players playing with communication have the effect of having maybe seven players on the ice. It gives you an advantage over your opponents. It shouldn't surprise you, then, that when a defenseman retrieves pucks, to try to initiate a breakout, communication is also a key to teamwork and success. A single defenseman retrieving a puck is usually facing away from the rush, looking at his own defensive zone boards, and has little access to information about where the forecheck is coming from, how many players are attacking, how much time he has, and what his best option is for success. However, when his defensive partner and goalie communicate with him, he has two extra sets of eyes looking up the ice at attackers, and they can not only provide him all the information he needs, they can provide him with outlets to defeat the attack. Even with that information, though, the defenseman needs to first trust his goalie and his partner, and often to blindly trust them and follow the direction when the pressure is really on. It takes time to develop the, that communication and trust, which is why most coaches prefer to keep defensive partners or pairs together. We're going to go over some simple defensive breakout calls that partners can use to achieve this communication, but first let's start with the goalie. The goalie is often the first player with an opportunity to play the puck, especially on a dump in by the opposing team. As the goalie moves to play the puck, the closest defenseman, we will call him D1 from here on out, needs to communicate to the goalie what he wants the goalie to do with the puck. In order to do that, we will use two easy, simple calls. Set, 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 and mine, mine, mine. The D1 will yell to the goalie, set, 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 if he wants the goalie to stop the puck and set it up for him to retrieve. In this case, the goalie will stop a puck rimming along the boards and leave it a foot or so off the boards, or if it's coming towards the goalie, he will position it below the goal line a foot or so off the boards. In this case, we've got a, a the puck that was dumped in, we've got a D1 coming to retrieve that puck, and we have our goalie in that. If this puck's coming hard around the boards, probably the most logical thing for D1 to yell is set, set, set. The goalie will come out of the net, stop that puck, set it up a foot or so off the boards so there's a little bit of room for the defenseman to play it so he doesn't have to play it right against the boards, and then that goalie is going to go back into the net. If the puck's coming at the goalie, he's going to save it, and he's going to take it and set it up behind the net for the defenseman that's coming in. The D1 will yell to the goalie, mine, 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 if he wants the goalie to just leave the puck alone. Usually this is when a puck's rimming in <clears throat> rather slowly, and the defenseman has a good opportunity to just go retrieve it himself. In this case, the goalie should just let the defenseman re retrieve the puck and not attempt to play the puck himself. Obviously, if this communication is poor and the goalie comes out for set, 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 and the defenseman's thinking, mine, 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 they end up running into each other, and that's kind of embarrassing for everybody. So, we'll pay attention to our defensive uh, calls between the, the D1 and the goalie. Set, 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 mine, mine, mine. And after doing this directed, the goalie will then focus on providing the defenseman information about the forecheck, such as, man on you hard, you have time, nobody coming, one guy coming slow. Goalies, speak up so you're heard. Don't be shy. Now that the goalie knows what to do with the puck and is communicating, the defensive partner further from the puck, we will call him D2 from here on, D2, should make the breakout call to the D1 retrieving the puck. D1 retrieving the puck in this case. We're going to use a few simple breakout calls. D2 will call up if the strong side, the side the puck is on, is open. The D1 will basically turn up ice and look to make the pass to their winger at the boards at the hash marks for a strong side breakout. This is the quickest and simplest option, but as we've discussed before in our breakout videos, the strong side is usually pretty crowded, and thus this isn't usually the best option. But again, up. Simple play. D2 will call over if the strong side is overcrowded, or if the winger isn't available on the strong side due to just not being there or being covered. When D2 calls over, D1 will immediately look to make a pass over to D2 behind the net. Ideally, this is a crisp tape-to-tape -tape pass, but a bank pass often is necessary. Either way, it needs to be a quick, hard, accurate pass, which sets the breakout to the weak side. Well, in this case, D1, the up isn't available. We have this F1 four-checker from the other team covering the winger. So, D2 is going to make the over call. And in this case, we're going to make a bank pass over to D2. That sets, up, that sets us up for a weak side breakout. D2 will call wheel when the D1 is moving towards the net and either there isn't much pressure or is a single four checker chasing D1. 
In this case, it's probably simpler and more effective to just skate the puck around the back of the net than to slow down by making a pass or risk a bad pass. In this case, D1 should skate as close to the net as possible and use the net to shield or disrupt the forechecker chasing him, and D2 can move into the path of the forechecker to also disrupt the forechecker. Once D1 crosses behind the net, D2 can drift behind the net in case the D1 encounters trouble and needs to reverse the puck. So in this case, D1 has the puck. He's got F1 right behind him. He's going to skate real close to the back of the net so that hopefully this F1 kind of gets disrupted by the net. Or D2 can kind of get in front. So if let's say D F1 decides to, he doesn't want to run into the net of the goalie, so he takes this path. Now D2 is in his way and he has to come around him. Either way, once D1 clears this area, F1 starts chasing him. D2 can rotate down, and if we needed to, we can make the bank pass back if that's necessary. D2 will call reverse if either the over or more often the wheel falls apart. For example, if the D1 is going wheel but gets caught by the four checker chasing him, the D2 has pivoted below the goal line and calls reverse. So D1 can bank the pass back behind the net to D2 instead of coughing the puck up. Or we will call over, but a four check gets in the way of the breakout, and now the weak side breakout is no longer an option. Again, we call reverse and reverse direction of the play to the breakout to the better side. So this one, I kind of have it drawn both ways. What we just started with on the last uh, breakout call. This defenseman's carrying the puck on a wheel. The F1's behind him. I'm going to actually put two things together. This D D1 comes over. Now the F2 has cut off his breakout. And the F1 has caught him. D2 has pivoted below the goal line. And this D1 can simply, on, on the reverse call, this D2 knows he's wide open. He sees what's happening in D1. He calls reverse, reverse, reverse. You make a bank pass back off the boards of D2, and now this whole side is open for the breakout. D2 will call center if the four checkers pinch the boards on both sides and leave the center of the ice wide open. This is the most dangerous of all the options because we're moving the puck through the house. But if this is the best option, it can be done. I would stress this is the one you do not make blindly. If you can't visually confirm your passing lane is clear, do not make this play. So again here, we've got our, our wingers, uh, left wing and right wing. They're both covered by four checkers. Maybe this F3 is slow getting back or something like that. Uh, we In our breakout videos, we talked about the center staying slow and low. Well, the center is wide open. Why do anything other than send it up? As long as you can visually confirm that there's nobody around here, that this is a safe pass to make, this D2 yells over center. We hit the center, and that center skates up and we're on our way so that's the center defensive breakout call one more note on communication is that we can't have any more than one player making the defensive breakout calls otherwise we could have four players each calling a different breakout and that would be super confusing and super disruptive to what we're trying to accomplish i would prefer d2 always makes the call for d1 unless for some reason d2 is no around maybe he fell down somewhere on his way back or I don't know, I went on a line change or something like that, then the goalie can make the breakout call. So to recap, between the D1 and the goalie, we have set, 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 and mine, mine, mine. And from D2 to D1, we have up, over, wheel, reverse, and center. We're going to practice those throughout this season, so hopefully you guys will become second nature. Uh, but effective defensive communication is smart hockey, and that's what we want to see from you guys.